France 24 debate. We are talking about uh, the uh, uh, Tax the Rich Act 2 is the topic uh, we saw last Thursday. The French president, Francois Hollande, um, who uh, announced that he is pressing forth after the Constitutional Court rejected uh, a plan to tax revenues above 1 million euros at a 75% bracket. He's pull, plowing ahead with it. This time it will be a payroll tax instead. With us to talk about it, French Socialist Member of Parliament, Phil Cordery, who represents uh, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands in the French Parliament. Um, also with us, um, international relations consultant Félix Marquard, uh, Philippe Moreau-Chevrolet of Le Plus, the uh, French news weekly, the Nouvel Observateur's interactive news website, and uh, tax attorney Thomas Carbonnier. Welcome back um, to all of it. Um, regarding this uh, uh, news that came this morning, that even footballers would, uh, would be included, I don't agree, but I'll pay it, was the reaction of the Qatari president of Paris Saint-Germain, um, he's going to have to pay that new and improved payroll tax for the likes of star striker Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Joseph Tandy has more. Barcelona's soccer stars are in town. Even before the game, French footballers were crying foul play, not over the match, but over their future tax bill. In an interview with newspaper Le Parisien on Monday, French Football Federation boss Noel Legret said that soccer clubs count as medium-sized businesses. He said that meant footballers would avoid being caught offside by President François Hollande's planned super tax. On Tuesday, the French government counterattacked, saying soccer stars would still have to pay up. I think football clubs are a bit above the turnover of typical small and medium-sized businesses. Sports clubs represent a very visible part of the economy, but I think that growth will come from small and medium-sized companies as a whole, rather than from sports clubs. In France, around 100 players earn over a million euros per year, among them many of the heavy hitters lured to Paris Saint-Germain by high wages. The club pays striker Zlatan Ibrahimovic 14 million euros per year. Defender Thiago Silva earns 9.6 million. Carlo Ancelotti, the world's second best paid manager, receives 12 million euros per year. Opposition politicians have slammed the proposed tax. Even hardline left party leader Jean-Luc Mélenchon stood up for football's millionaires. A tax isn't there to punish people, it's there to share the wealth. We're not looking to humiliate people who have money. In December, France's constitutional court rejected François Hollande's proposed tax. Last week, Hollande suggested a new plan of attack. The levy would now apply not to earners themselves, but to the companies paying their wages. Um, again, as we said at the outset, uh, Philip Cordery, there is this thing about the relationship France has to money. Well, I mean, the the uh, I think what France has and uh, what it's sort of putting in place in any case is uh, a policy uh, which is on the one hand redistributive and uh, there the question of money, I mean, is there also, uh, as I said earlier on, uh, for uh, for obvious reasons that we, we need to distribute it and to pay the services uh, that all the people benefit. So it's a, it's a redistributive policy. On the other hand, we have also uh, a, a problem of competitiveness and the government is also going into that uh, area with the competitiveness pact, with the uh, sort of the labour market uh, reforms. I think, I mean, there really are two legs on the policy uh, of the government. Uh, it might be sort of uh, uh, unpopular, and we're here also to explain uh, what the policy is. Uh, but uh, what I'm sort of convinced today is that uh, it's going in the right direction because what the previous government did was only give uh, sort of uh, presents to the richer, right, let, fiscal presents to, 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 to the richer, and which incre increased our debt, and we sort of cannot go in that direction anymore. Let, let's explain a little bit, because for some people, the real revolution is the bill that was introduced this Tuesday uh, in the French Parliament, a bill whereby employees could agree to lower salaries in order to keep their jobs. They could also be told to move to another city or else to get a payoff and leave. The communists and their allies are up in arms. The ruling socialists say they'll stand firm. Will this text that I'm presenting reduce layoffs? Yes, because right now, when a business is in trouble, its first reflex is to lay off people. In the future, it will be to liaise with the union organizations and find alternative methods to avoid layoffs. That's the only thing that interests me.
Now, the novelty of the bill is that it's the follow-up to a deal reached between a majority of trade union confederations and the French Employers Union, the first deal of its kind in over two decades. He didn't play the tough guy, as my grandmother would say, and he wasn't hitting his fist on the table, he wasn't threatening anyone. If you do that in a country like France today, the result is confrontation and conflict. What's the result in this case? What is the consequence? The breakdown of the state for six months. So a deal reached between a majority of trade unions. However, France's largest, the communist-backed CGT, did not sign. This agreement is bad for all workers because these are just rights which might one day exist. Additional health care might one day exist. Right now, in the current bill, nothing exists. Nothing that could be construed as an advantage for workers in concrete terms, either in the agreement or in the bill. So, Felix Marquardt, you have, OK, uh, employers being told they're going to have to boost um, health care benefits. Uh, they might be taxed if they have um, short-term contracts. But they're going to be able to lower salaries? That's, that's unheard of in France. I'd like to come back. It is unheard of, and I, and I, I think that we can come back to that. I, I'd like to talk about what you referred to earlier on, the, the sort of the issue of the French with money. Um, the fact of the matter is that there's most European countries... Uh, most OECD countries have a left-wing party that has gone from socialism to social democracy. The French have a problem with the word money. They have a problem with the word entrepreneur. They have a problem with the word rich and with the rich themselves. They have a problem with enterprise. They have a problem not with this business. I'm Maybe sorry. the previous government, but not this one. Seriously, I mean, you cannot, I mean, you cannot say that even, never been even as much the ultra-left party in this country is attacking the left for, uh, is calling this tax absurd. Even Mélenchon. I mean, to get that guy to come and say that out loud. But this bill to loosen the labor law, is this the sleeper that's being passed through on, on the quiet? Uh, because it is a big deal, isn't it? It's it, an historical gesture. Telling it is, employees it, it's you, you have move. to move to another city or else we'll, we'll, this we'll is social democracy. Off it is all. discussion between social partners. It is, it is a big deal. Bringing, I don't want to I, I don't want to say this. This is indeed a big deal. And I think it's it's one solution. <clears throat> I think the problem is that it's 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 it should be sort of a marginal solution. It's going to become the only solution for employers who are facing um, to, you know, to, to a, a difficult situation in their in their industries, and that's that's for me the problem. It's it's sort of it's it it should be the the sort of the the sidekick thing, and it's it's becoming the central way whereby we're hoping uh, employers will deal with with uh, with uh, certain issues of, of revenue, etc. It, it's that's the problem. Philip Cordery, um, this uh, plan also includes the measure of bringing trade unions into the boardroom, of having um, employee representatives uh, in the boardroom. So Effect the Germans have done this effect 40 years ago? Effectively, uh, are the French now going to try to replicate the German model? It's a, I mean, it's, it's a step forward, as I said, it was said earlier on. I mean, in 20 years, there never has been an agreement between social partners like this one. Uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's a revolution which uh, François Hollande wanted and uh, which we will be discussing in the Parliament uh, this week. I mean, everything is not exactly what we would have done, uh, but we'll respect what the socialist par social partners discussed and, uh, and, and decided uh, together. So it's a, it's a big uh, advance. I think there's, there's many advancements for, uh, for the, uh, for, for the world. Workers, uh, the fact that the trade unions will be much more sort of uh, represented, uh, the, the, the healthcare uh, issue. Uh, there's uh, other issues which wouldn't have gone uh, in that way. And for example, I wouldn't have taxed uh, sort of the, uh, the, the short term contracts. Uh, more, I mean, the, the problem is more the one-year contracts and the one-month contracts in terms of precari precariousness. Uh, so not everything would have been done exactly in the way uh, that they're there, but it's a first step, and I think there'll be other discussions, and it's at least the start of a real social dialogue in this country, which the previous government has been incapable of doing. The, the start of a social dialogue, or Philippe Moreau-Chevrolet, are uh, the chickens going to come home to roost uh, uh, when there are local elections next year? And people on the left say, hey, uh, 
Why is my why is my paycheck lowered? I think it's a quite clever move from François Hollande because on the one hand he does this seventy five percent symbolic gesture that raises uh, waves of protests from the right, and on the other hand, which and we, which will raise peanuts from the wealthy uh, people. On the on the other hand, he's doing this real unprecedented conservative move from a socialist government. Is really making the marketplace flexible. It's something that will be really hard to swallow for the left. So he's doing something very clever there. On the one hand, he gives this symbolic gesture, but worth of nothing in terms of uh, raising money on everything. On the other hand, he's doing a real restructuration of the labor market, which is unprecedented from a socialist government. It's quite clever. But it's, it's, it's quite it, good. But it's a certain in terms vision of communication. Of, it's clever. It's it's. Uh, Fair but enough. you see, okay. you're in helping Hollande. In you're helping of, Hollande. Felix in terms, of, in terms of communication, maybe it's clever. But the fact of the matter is, what this country needs when we come to, to the, when we talk about flexibility, this country needs for employers to stop being panicked about the possibility of hiring someone because of the possibility in a few months, a few years, of not being able to fire them. So that is the real flexibility that we need in France. And that's the it's only way there. that we it's will get there. less uh, people on, C, on, on, on temporary short-term, short-term contracts rather than long-term but contracts. I think the main T- thing is, is Th- Thomas Carbonier. Carbonier. needs to change. Thomas Carbonier, at, at, at the law firm where you work, is that a big concern? Would, do you think people would there'd be more hirings if, uh, uh, if, if, uh, if, if the labor law was different? Yeah, I think so, because uh, they are really fear of the future because... Our country needs more vision uh, how to, to help the economy to grow. This is the main issue. Um, it's not a question exactly of the labor law, even it's, if it's very di- uh, difficult to apply correctly in our country. But the main issue is business. Um, is is, is a, a, and, a better a better business climate, Philip Corden? And, yeah, but I think we I mean we need competitiveness uh, and we need security for the workers and uh, there's there's a balance that is struck here. Uh, but we cannot say and I cannot let you say uh, that nothing has been done for the enterprises. You're going in to this have government. to let me say it. Well, no, you're, you're not going to say it because <laughs> not, nothing. Well, you I said did, it. By the way, you I said, didn't uh, say that uh, nothing uh, had been done because no, we false. have a competitiveness pact which false. was voted before. Uh, but that's a big word. December. What's behind it? What is a competitiveness more, pact? More what the hell does that mean? for our Money viewers for all around the world. They have no clue what okay. you mean by competitiveness. So there's, there's also more room, room to oh, maneuver, one second, one second. Philip more room to Philip maneuver for enterprises to be able to invest uh, and to create growth. I mean, this was decided by uh, the government. What? I'm uh, sorry, we but have... that's still a big phrase. That doesn't okay, mean... But, but that means more money for the enterprises uh, so p- to be able to invest on the markets and create But activity. enterprises should be create able activity. to invest in whatever the hell they want. Why do we need a new measure for that? Well, I mean, to I mean, to so that so that they have the the, the, the possibility. Okay. To so do. you're I mean, pointing to the fact that we are in our in an so archaic so that, system that, that needed first, reform. That was the Fine, first measure. Fantastic. A public investment bank was created to help small and medium enterprises to be able also there <laughs> to invest, to get no. to have easier oh, access enough. to money, to be able to invest. Because what we need in this country is growth and growth and activity, which will create employment. Because that's the number one problem. That, that bank. The, the truth is, I'm no government really, really cared do. to help the entrepreneurs so far. No government it's did true. the effort to help the entrepreneurs. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not this defending, is I'm not defending uh, Nicolas Sarkozy's government. Contrary to what you seem no, to Nicolas think. No, Nicolas Sarkozy did nothing to okay. help entrepreneurs. But, but that's my point. No, no, but I'm saying, I'm not defending This government is him. trying to do something. Let it do no, something. Give me a break. It's time they do something. This government is scared shitless of taking the real, of making making, introducing so is any doing anything real reform. This government reform. is accountable to the voters, contrary to you. Is anyone doing, is <laughs> That's anything, a democracy. Anyone doing anything positive right, Philip, in this country, according to you? Philip, oh, Cord- Philip Cordery, yeah. uh, again, we were talking about, uh, are the French trying to apply the German model? Um, are, is, is, François Hollande, model is François Hollande going to be the Gerhard Schroeder who makes these tough decisions? Uh, but then, of course, we all know what happened afterwards to Gerhard Schroeder. He got voted out of office, and the the fruits of his labor only came about years later, too long in political uh, time. 
Well, I think François Hollande is not a Gerhard Schröder. He's a François Hollande. And, and <laughs> what's happening today in France is not what happened in Germany uh, at the time. And he's not uh, sort of dismantling uh, the social security in the way that uh, he I think said, Gerhard he Schröder said, did. He, he has said, um, give, me two years, give me two years to turn it around. Yeah, and uh, I sort of trust that the government is doing the right thing. The I Germans have wrong. a social Compe security system today. Competitiveness for the enterprises to be able to invest. So growth on the one hand and uh, re redistribution so security on the other uh, for the people. And if we manage, and what is the gov government is doing is on these two pillars, uh, that can change, uh, that can change the, uh, the French economy and, and, and make our figures uh, also revert uh, by the end of next year and create jobs. Because the, to what is revert the most at the end of in, this year. What the most important is that jobs are created uh, because that's the number one concern of the people. Uh, number one concern that uh, jobs are created. We have uh, Eurozone unemployment figures that came out uh, this Tuesday, a record high, 12% across the Eurozone. France only slightly below that 12%. Again, uh, will the French uh, have a short attention span when it comes to the, 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 uh, what's going on right now and have to change course? I think the French will judge the government by its results. And uh, François Hollande is so low now in the polls that he... He, pretty much he has nothing to lose. He can try anything he wants. But at the end of the, of the day, at the end of this year, he will have to be a, to, to go to this election, local elections we have. It's a huge cycle of elections, local elections, European elections. Next year. Next year. We have one year to prepare for it. And I think um, he will have to have results before the end of this year. He will have to have results before the end of December, as he promised. And uh, it's a European crisis. I don't think he has much... Wait on every on, on all of this, and the main problem yeah, he has I'm, is I'm is appear not to be really decided, not to have real opinion on what he should do. That's his main weakness. Well, with, lack of decision. I'm sorry, with friends like these, do you really need enemies? It was just said that he has very little weight on these matters. I mean, I mean it, listen, it's a European I, crisis. It's just yeah. a statement. Well, where it's is not it? friendly. Where? Neither I mean, indeed, indeed, I mean, the fact of the matter. It's okay, let's just statement. take one number. Last it's an week, crisis. last week, we reached. The point where for 22 months in a row now, unemployment in this country has been rising. Now you can be, this is not, this should not be. Unfortunately, we are in France and it always ends up being an ideological conversation. It's been now 23 months in a row that unemployment has gone down in the UK. Now I ask the question very simply, are the Brits completely idiots and they're by chance lucky and Felix, unemployment is Felix, rising when you there, go to the no, hospital, right. do you no, go in the UK finish. or do you go in France? Or, I would like to or, know that. Or Felix, perhaps, when you have to go to are the there doctor? recipes that tell are us, not carried out in this country uh, have you been that down should reduce Felix? unemployment? Have, have you been down 22 months? Or East London? 23 have you seen, have you seen months? Felix the conditions of I mean, people in the UK? It's very simple. Felix Marquardt opening a new can of worms. Unfortunately, though, we're out of time. Maybe Felix wants to go to hospital in London. Maybe it's a good thing you try it, Felix. Next time you're in London, don't go to Malaysia. Chevalier. I tried to go to the hospital. Philippe Moreau Chevalier, <laughs> thank you. Thomas Carbonier, I want to thank uh, Philippe Cordier and Felix Marquardt for this staid and understated Pleasure. discussion. Thank you for being with us here in the France 24 debate.